Section six of Oscar Wilde Art and Morality A Defence of the Picture of Dorian Gray Edited by Stuart Mason This Librivox recording is in the public domain Recording by Martin Geeson Section six the public is always asking a writer why he does not write like somebody else quite oblivious of the fact that if he did anything of the kind he would cease to be an artist once more the editor attempted to justify his reviewer's trenchant criticism mr oscar wilde makes his third and we presume his final reply to the criticism which we published on the picture of dorian gray somewhat grudgingly but in sufficiently explicit terms he withdraws the charge of personal malice which he brought against the critic and which we may again assure him is absolutely unfounded but he adheres to the other charge of critical incapacity mr wilde assures us that his book so far from being dull and tedious is full of interest an opinion which is shared see the letter we print on another page to-day by his publisher's advertising agent in advance well we can only repeat that we disagree with mr wilde and his publisher's paragraphist quite apart from ethical considerations the book seems to us a feeble and ineffective attempt at a kind of allegory which in the hands of abler writers writers like mr stevenson and mr anstey for instance can be made striking or amusing mr wilde also says that we suggested that the author and publishers of the picture of dorian gray ought to be prosecuted by the tory government by which we presume he means the treasury no we consider that such prosecutions are ill-advised and expressly suggested that such action ought not to be taken against a book which we believed to be rendered innocuous by the tedious and stupid qualities which the critic discovered and explained secondly mr wilde hints that the rights of literature include a right to say what it pleases how it pleases and where it pleases that is a right not only not recognized by the law of the land but expressly denied by penalties which have been repeatedly enforced then what does mr oscar wilde mean by talking about the rights of literature we will not insult an artist who is by his own account unmoral or supramoral by suggesting that he means moral rights but he tells us that limitations may be set on action but ought not to be set on art quite so but art becomes action when the work of art is published it is offensive publications that we object to not the offensive imaginings of such minds as find their pleasure therein letter from a london editor in the same issue of june the twenty eighth appeared the following letter to the editor of the st james's gazette sir if mr oscar wilde is the last man in england according to his own account who requires advertisement his friends and publishers do not seem to be of the same opinion 
otherwise it is difficult to account for the following audacious puff positive which has been sent through the halfpenny post to newspaper editors and others mr oscar wilde will contribute to the july number of lippincott's magazine a complete novel entitled the picture of dorian gray which as the first venture in fiction of one of the most prominent personalities and artistic influences of the day will be everywhere read with wide interest and curiosity but the story is in itself so strong and strange and so picturesque and powerful in style that it must inevitably have created a sensation in the literary world even if published without mr wilde's name on the title page viewed merely as a romance it is from the opening paragraph down to the tragic and ghastly climax full of strong and sustained interest as a study in psychology it is phenomenal judged even purely as a piece of literary workmanship it is one of the most brilliant and remarkable productions of the year such sir is the estimate of mr wilde's publishers or paragraph writer note the adjectival exuberance of the puffer complete strong strange picturesque powerful tragic ghastly sustained phenomenal brilliant and remarkable for a man who does not want advertisement this is not bad i am sir your obedient servant june the twenty seventh a london editor end of section six